Yeah, dealing with a really frustrating uh, speed control issue. And I know what it's from. It's not just speed control and my rhythm's off, I'm way out of stroke. And the most common reason for this is just not playing cool enough. And it's not like I'm, I'm getting on a table I've never been in and can't figure out the speed of the table. I know the speed, it's just that my body, you know, I, I've got a jerky stroke and, and it's just, you know, I'm either coming up short or going too long. I and mean, I know a lot of you guys are dealing with this. And you should know that your internal rhythm and the speed control with your body is just goes hand in hand. It all works together. So if you're out of stroke, you're going to have trouble with speed. And you're either going to come up, you know, too short or go too long. And this can be so frustrating. But I mean, it's my own fault. There's no sense in getting mad at it. It's just a matter of not playing enough pool one night a week. Just ain't going to cut it. And it's funny, there's different ways of handling this and even thinking about it. And I come from the Buddy Hall School of Pool. Buddy was my idol and I tried to emulate everything. I couldn't do it. I couldn't have that short bridge. Um, and a lot of today's players say, no, 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 don't do it Buddy's way. And what Buddy Hall did was he shot... He only had one speed um, on his coupe. So he only had, to, you know, in green, one speed on every single shot. And he would just use top and bottom and different uh, areas of English in order to get the position he needed to be in. Uh, that's how Buddy Hall did it. And today's players are more geared to utilizing the speed of your cue in order to get the right position. And because when when you're relying on English to do it, now you're bringing in all kinds of, of factors like deflection, and, um, overspinning and underspinning and, and all this. But still, this is the way I tried to do it most of my life. And I, I ended up incorporating both schools of thought into my game, depending on what shot I'm faced with. Which is probably not good. And you should just... Actually, most players, advanced players, say don't try to do it, buddy's way. Buddy was this one-of-a-kind dude that just, you know, he succeeded against the odds in in what he did, but he, he was just too inspiring for me to just ignore anything he was doing. Now, this is, here's this, I'm a kid in Philadelphia, um, just a total banger, and here comes this big Texas guy coming into the big city of Philadelphia, um, to mob area in Philadelphia, South Philly, and never saying a word, he led his stake horses speak for him um, and he's like 400 pounds he's real tall he's got these hands as big as my head and uh, and then he, he proceeds to walk around and do everything like a 90 pound female ballerina you know just kind of grace and, and perfect rhythm and yeah, perfect stroke and perfect position and, and, and it was just to me, it was just, it floored me, it knocked me out, and I decided right then, I mean, I was never going to be 400 pounds, or, you know, 6'5", or whatever it is, but I wanted everything, I wanted that grace and that rhythm and the, that, that, I, I don't know what you would call it, when you see a man like that, with that much grace and, and, and elegance and, Almost like he was fragile, you could just push him over. Um, it was just amazing to me. That, I, that's the guy I wanted to be. Um, I don't think anyone ever inspired me in anything like that. So that's the school, and that's what I'm back to is learning how 
uh, to be Buddy Hahn. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, light years, you know, I, I came close. And, but when you don't play, man, you, you lose it. You don't lose your knowledge, um, you, you lose your, your muscle coordination and speed control is the first thing. Here's what we have, and two balls went on the break. This one ball shot's a little bit touchy, and we have some options. And here's the most natural option, but it's a little bit touchy. It's easy to go long or come up short on that shot. And then we have another option. We could just uh, draw it, not super draw it, but just put a little bit of bottom and a little bit of right on this and spin it between the three and the six and try to get on the right hand side of the three. That too is very, very touchy. And then we have another option of going back to the natural way and just putting a lot more top on it and going down table to shoot the two ball in the side. I like the first option, that's the one I'm going with. And a two ball shot is a simple stun over for the three, but I stunned it over a little bit too hard and I, I didn't get straight in, which makes it difficult to judge the roll. I'm getting on the five, but I'm trying to get straight in on the five so I can just stop the cue ball and be perfect on the six. And I wind up going a little bit too long, so now I'm off angle. I, I can't stop this cue ball on the five, and I can't push it to the rail and kill it. I've got this really strange angle, so I try to go two rails, wind up accidentally going three rails because I hit it too hard and get pretty bad on the six. So when you actually watch the video, I was trying to get here on the six so I could go up table and back down table on the eight. It would have been pretty simple. Um, but it, all that was compensating for the bad position I got on the five. So that's what started this train wreck here. And let's see what my break looks like here. I can tell I'm a little stiff and out of stroke just by the way I'm standing. Well, it wasn't bad. There's a little bit of accidental top on it. But we made the four ball and the seven ball. The seven ball was a fluke, but the four ball was the wing ball. Well, there's what we have. And getting from the one to the two, I showed you the options I had here in the, in the start of the video. And I'm choosing uh, the first option. Sometimes it's best to go with your first instinct, but this is touchy, man. Getting on this two between the nine and the three is touchy, but it, it was a natural way to do it. And I actually tried to hit the three. I think I actually did rub up against it in the end there. And now I'm kind of worried about being against it and fouling, but I should be okay. I am okay. I'm okay. Uh, where are we at? And the three is actually, I'm going to push down the table, but I push down, I just go too far. And my speed control is off. I'm hitting that exactly center ball and just kind of forcing the cue ball down. But I just went like an inch too long. It was a very touchy shot. And now I'm at that weird position where I can't, I can't kill it off the rail. I'm going to get behind the nine. So I got to go forward here. And I just put that little too, I just hit it too hard. It, it was, you know, if I came up like a foot shorter, I'd have been fine on the six ball. So now I'm trying to stun draw this ball. And chalk's wrong away because it's a predator chalk. And instead of burning out, it just kind of jumped up in the air. And when it hit the asphalt, it just kind of blew a transmission, man. Yeah, you hot riders know exactly what I'm talking about. So now I'm limping back to the shop for a quick swap and an effort. 
to get back in this. But I gotta get the crutch. And I still shoot crutches uh, overhand like a dart. And every seasoned player says, don't do that. But, you know, I, can't, and I tried it the other way and I just feel crippled or something. And see, overhand works for me. I should have been a dart player. Yeah. It doesn't always work. It is what it is. Now we're coming to the end of another pool game. This shot is not as easy as it looks. I'm not exactly straight in. I have to push forward to the left a little bit. But there it is, and I'm going to show you another one, I'm not going to yak in it, I'm just going to show you how my speed control is off, and this next one was shot just last night. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know Johnny. <laughs> 